Yes, go live. Okay, let's let's see if this is let's see if this is working. Can it still says it's waiting for me. Uh, stop streaming. Ah, I can hear myself. I can hear myself. Yes. <laughs> All right, I am going to, I'm gonna mute that so that, uh, so that I can, I can talk and not hear some sort of an echo. So uh, if, if you guys can hear me, just uh, put a message in the, in the chat. I'm gonna still adjust a few things here. Um, might have to, Move a couple of let's see now. Guess I'll be waiting. Hi, anyone who's watching. <laughs> uh, let's see, uh, what was I looking at? Yes, there's the storyboard, and I've just got to look at um, good morning, good audio. Oh, excellent. Hi, Tom, how's it going? Uh, all right. So I am looking at some, oh yes, right, why have I got, why have I got Wally Woods 22 panels up? Uh, just let me check, I'm going to see if I can do something here, um, my channel, let's save that, community, Yep, checking the final poll numbers uh, on 33 votes. It's, yes, explore Ed White's storyboarding add-on for Blender. That's what we're doing today. Uh, awesome. <laughs> so that's what a lot of people wanted. So that's what we're going to be looking at, guys. Okay, great. Yeah, this is, uh, this is kind of exciting stuff. Um, now, uh, for, all you, uh, for all you early people, um, yes, I do have a little bit of news which... Oh boy, am I going to tease this? Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of teasing here because it's nothing's official. I, I've got a, um, I've got a contract that I have yet to sign. I can't really talk about it at the moment, but it's an exciting project. And as soon as it's all public, then you know you're going to hear me go on about it. But it does involve storyboarding. So what we're doing today isn't that project, um, but I downloaded this add-on. In order to assist me in um, uh, in this project, and so uh, I've just been playing around with it for less than a day. And uh, the reason I, I wanted to do this on the live stream is because it's it's incredibly intuitive. Uh, <laughs> tease you? Yes, I'm teasing you. Um, hi, bro. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's it's incredibly intuitive. So, uh, what's the add-on? Well, it's it's this. Add-on that you're seeing on the screen is called Storyboard and Animatic Add-on for Blender, and it's by a guy called Ed White, who I've just been having a few chats with uh, lately. Hi, Gerard, how's it going? Uh, so uh, I'm going to jump into Blender because everyone who's going to be uh, turning up later will probably catch this at some point. And so let's start from the top. What I'm going to do is, you know, let's let's assume let's assume you've downloaded it. You, you, you put it in the folder that you need to put it in and uh, and then you've you've done the install and now we're looking for 3d view storyboard I'm just going to enable this uh, now even from just enabling it the uh, options are really really good okay so I'm just going to go through a couple of these I mean definitely read the documentation and Ed has said that he's going to be putting together some sort of video. I've even offered to put some uh, video content towards uh, or together for him, um, but we're still sort of like umming and ahhing about it. And, um, and uh, you know, he's got to do an official one that, you know, I'm not going to sort of cut anyone's lunch, as the expression goes here in Australia. Um, you know, it's his plugin, it's his baby, um, but I am more than happy to do a live stream on it and a few demos 
with it. And Ed sort of kindly given permission me for, to given me permission to go ahead and do that. So uh, let's take a look at this. Okay, so this is the add-on 3D View Storyboard. It's simply called that. Um, and this is the latest version that's available right now. And the way it works is that it pff, just do it. Yes, just hit the subscribe button. That's what that's what Mark on means by just do it. <laughs> so if you haven't subscribed already, uh, yes, that's that's my cue for. Uh, he, he likes to sort of cue me uh, cue me in for that. Um, all right, so let's, let's take a look at these preferences. Actually, hang on. What I need. What I need is my magnifier app so that you guys can see my mouse. Why? Yeah, I'm not seeing the mouse here. Damn it. Magnifier. Yes, I... Uh... Let's see if this works now. Yeah, let's, let's bring that down and can... Yes, we should be able to see... I'm just going to check my... My live stream here. Yes, okay, now we can see a mouse around the screen. That would be really, really nice. Um, I'm also going to get another add-on here because this is version 2.92? Yes, whatever the latest official release is. Excellent. Okay, so let's, let's go back to where I can see the delayed live stream. There it is. Excellent. All right, where were we? Yes, we've enabled the store. Bloody hell. Excellent connection, it's telling me. Current viewers. So it's not my crappy internet. No, it's my crappy internet, Bron. <laughs> oh boy, what's... Should I do an end stream? Okay, I'm back. I'm back. Okay, good. All right. Right, let's bring back those preferences, shall we? All right, I'm back. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, change the latency. Yeah, I think I will. To low, I guess. Okay, we're back. I can hear excellent connection. Okay, good. I'm just going to go with it for now. <laughs> Welcome back. Back in town, mate. All right. So where was I? All right, I'm just going to backtrack here a little bit. Uh, yes. I've enabled the storyboard. Uh, now it's probably going to be me. I'm really hoping my, my kids are off the iPads because that will really mess things up. You can go and yell at them if you like, but uh, I'll have to mute myself. Otherwise, yeah, it's all on record, isn't it? Um, right. <laughs> Shut up, Paul. Let's get started. Right, storyboard creation. <laughs> Right, preferences. Uh, the camera names will be shot, so every image will be called shot one, shot two, through however many you want. The layout I like to have as a default grid, but some people like a horizontal strip, so it just goes one, two, three, four, and you can just go along there. It's really good for animatic processes. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna have this as storyboard columns and rows, uh, four by three, which is fairly default. Now, uh, this quick start means that you won't get these options when you go create storyboard it'll just create one for you but i'm just going to leave that off because um i like to sort of think about this when i'm creating now the next bit down are the grease pencil custom layer names yes what it does is it creates these layers inside of each Grease pencil object it makes for each frame. And so more on that later. But as you can see, we've got some four basic ones, some backgrounds, some characters. I'm going to leave it at that. And now we've got some grease pencil custom materials. This, These are the materials it will create for your pen strokes or your fills or whatever. Now, these are really good defaults, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to Disable grays and whites, so I only get a black stroke. I'm going to enable the non-repro blue and non-photo non red, which Ed put in as a bit of an homage <laughs> to, to this course I did. Um, I like to work with these pencils, and sometimes this is really is nice as doing your drafts in non-photo red or 
non-repo blue. Okay, seems to be an excellent connection still. Excellent, good. Um, and then I like to create a custom material. Now, this custom material, I'm going to give this a name. Let's call this Solid Fill. I'm going to disable stroke, enable fill in this color. Let's give this 100% alpha and maybe a factor of 0.5 to give this a nice light gray. So now we've got a fill material. So anytime we need to do like a, a fill or a shadow or something like that, we've got a material that we can work with. And that's, that's it, that's the setup, okay? Now we can shut down our preferences. And when we go into, let's hit the N key, oh, oh, where, 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 over here, no, it's making me make a message. I need to be selecting Blender, N key, I'm just going to, yeah, I can see my mouse. Excellent, good. Down the side here, I've got my screencast keys. How about I turn those on? And let's just hit this a couple of times. Now everyone can see my screencast keys. I might end up aligning these left. Bring these over here and let's increase that mouse size so that when I bring my storyboard keys, we can open up all of these windows as we need them. And uh, and the screencast keys won't won't get in the way. Oof! I'm about to ask, can someone type a message <laughs> in the chat just to see uh, if if this is all happening? All right. Okay. Hello, yes, excellent. Thank you, yes sir. Uh, all right, so uh, what we've got here, uh, we've got on our, as you know, we've got uh, two sidebars in Blender on the viewport. <laughs> Still happening, excellent, good. We've got the T, which is the toolbox, and we've got the N, which gives us these, uh, these wonderful tools for anything that we happen to be using. And so for instance, here I've got this grease pencil tool uh, because I'm in draw mode in grease pencil. Um, I've got the screencast keys and I've got my storyboard. Now what I'm going to do is if I go back into object mode, now under my workspace, I filter my add-ons, just have my that one and maybe my screencast keys just in case anything goes back. Hi Warren. How's it going? <laughs> uh, all right, so storyboard. That's what we're doing. We're making a storyboard. So the first thing you've got to do, of course, is create one. So let's go ahead and click create storyboard. Bang. And uh, again, see, see if, I, if I had the quick start key, it'll just create it with our options. But here we can actually increase or decrease the count, number of panels, Right, 16, um, and then we, I'm just gonna leave it at default, four by three, so just 12 panels. Now the animatic time jump is really cool because this will add markers at this frame interval. I'm going to make the time jump, let's make it 24. So currently it's set to 24 frames a second, which is sort of like a universal filmic um, uh, frame count, frames per second. Uh, and I don't really want to mess around with my render settings too much. And then I'm going to click OK. There we go. All right. And now you'll see under cameras, got this list of cameras in scene, storyboard, and then shots 1 to 12 have all been created. Now I'm going to click on storyboard and we zoom out to this camera here, which is the storyboard camera. And we can see all of the cameras that are available. Uh, now, one camera that is also seen is our original <laughs> camera uh, here. I'm going to leave this on because I tended to get a few little crashes every now and then if I make this invisible or whatnot. Um, uh, but uh, let's just swing into 3D view to see what's going on. Let's see what Ed has created, what magic he's created. And this is, okay, what we have is uh, a bunch of 
these are actually um, polygonal meshes, right? That's just a plane. And these planes are added as backing boards. Uh, so uh, let's see, has this got a material? It doesn't. We can give it a material if we wanted to. Uh, I'm just going to give this a, a nice diffuse material. Let's set that. We can set it quite dark if we want to. So we can, you know, d depending on your preference for what you want to draw on, uh, we can actually give it a material. And then I'm just going to select all of these. Bump, 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 bump. And that one. And let's link all the materials together. So now they all have the same material. So now they all have the same material. Right. But they're just planes. Okay. Uh, let's take a look back through the storyboard. I'm just going to hit numpad zero so we can see. And you can see how we've made those planes nice and dark. Now, the normal way of selecting a camera like that and then going control zero is usually how you get into a view. But this add-on has overridden that. If I go to shot two, it actually moves over to shot two. Let's take a look at the active cameras here. Everyone can see that, all right? Uh, I'm just going to disable the scene world so that we've got this nice dark background and can see what's going on. If I select shot three or shot seven, right, it selects that shot. It automatically moves your view to that camera. That's pretty cool. So if we went, say, shot one, let's go back into, into view here. All right, I'm just going to, let's hope nothing crashes here. Uh, and of course, now we want to draw some storyboards. And so with shot one selected, we can hit draw. And when that happens, it instantly creates a new grease pencil object. I'll show you where this is. Okay, we've, we've got these, um, this, this outliner here. And the outliner is populated as we create various shots or what we need, right? So we've got uh, yeah, our original collection, which we need, our original camera, which we kind of need. This storyboard um, collection is created with a camera and a storyboard light in it. We'll just collapse that for now. Now this is the storyboard cameras where our shots one to 12 exist. Let's collapse that for a second. We've got the storyboard panels. These are our meshes, great. And now because we went draw, it's gone shot one, grease pencil. And so that is what we're looking at right now. Okay, so let's let's bring that up. It's automatically created those materials that we told it to create by default, our black, non-repo blue, and our solid fill. But for some reason, this solid fill, uh, did I do this wrong? It should have been a fill. So let's click on fill and let's untick stroke so that we've got this solid fill. Okay, now we can work with that if we so need it. Now I'm just going to go to my object data properties for the grease pencil. And you'll see that the four layers that were made by default are there. And the one with the little love heart on it, I'll just bring back my preferences for a second so you can see this, All right? You see how the character rough had a little love heart there? That says it's going to be the, the first layer that it is chosen for when you're drawing. Because often we start with characters and then we go to backgrounds but if you like to work with backgrounds first you can always make that your favorite right and so uh, i'm not sure if you can select another one no but you can certainly relabel these uh, i'm not sure if you can even add more but that's of no consequence this is basically a a starting point and, and i really like that because it's broken it down into what we need right we can do rough backgrounds rough characters and then we can do a cleanup and a background so Let's just, for example, let's let's do some character rough. We've got this layer selected. What material are we going to use with our pencil? Well, we can select the materials from the material uh, option here, but if you still want to just see your grease pencil object properties, it's probably a good idea to stay here. And we can go here, pencil, we've got the pencil brush, and let's go to solid fill. Let's go with non-photo red. Now that selects that particular material. Uh, now I won't get in too far in uh, between material and vertex color 
mode. Although when we're looking at some fills, we will have to go into vertex color. Very quickly, the differences between this, I'll have to get out of this storyboard thing here and just go over to my tool set here. You'll notice, I'm just gonna collapse this brush here. You'll notice that you've got this palette here. And right now it's grayed out because this is your vertex coloring palette. How does this work? How is it enabled? Well, it is a layer on top of these materials. These materials are kind of like your blender materials. Okay, so let's say for instance, I put solid fill on there. I got an ink pen to draw with. And uh, I was going to just draw a solid fill shape. Okay, it should be showing up. Front, origin, view. Let's try view. No, for some reason it's disappearing a lot. Where is my origin? There, okay. Hmm, let's see if we do it with just the black. Yep, that'll, that'll, that'll work. All right, now solid fill. Ah, interesting. What's going on? Oh, wait a second. It's stroke and fill here, yes. Material, solid fill. Do we need a stroke information? Is that how it's working? It's got alpha here. Hmm. All right. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do a quick cheat here. I'm gonna draw something in black ink. I'm gonna go into edit mode. Let's see if, just because I, I really, really want to show this off. Okay, and then I'm gonna go solid fill, assign. Probably because it's gray. So let's make this a dark, ah, there we go. Yeah, because it was exact, exactly the same color as the background, silly Paul. Okay, there we go. We've got this solid fill up here. And so now we can draw these shapes. Okay, great. So what's going on there? Well, we are drawing with this material here in this color. And if we wanted to draw other materials, we would have to make another solid fill, change the color and draw in that. What vertex coloring does is allow us to just use one Material, this is solid fill here. Go over to vertex color. And then when we click on that, vertex coloring, let's change this mode, make, by default, a stroke and fill, right? Fill some color as background. Yes. <laughs> uh, thanks, Jay Shivera. Um, I'm gonna leave this as stroke and fill because this means that it will color any stroke and fill material. Right, but what, uh, in what scenarios? In what you're doing in generic illustrations, would that be better? Yeah, um, yes sir, uh, I like to work with uh, vertex coloring. Here's why, I'm just about to explain it. It means that you only have to use a finite amount of materials, okay? And you can have an infinite palette or you know, however many palette numbers you want, right? So let's say red. Now when I draw, I draw in red. Then I select yellow, I draw in yellow, I select pink, I draw in pink, right? So this means that I can select from the palette and draw, okay? And it's all this solid fill material. How do I know this? I'm gonna go into solid mode. And solid mode is showing the color of the material, right? If I show the color in solid mode of the vertex, then we can actually see the colors that are being used as vertex coloring. I won't go too deep into this. Uh, I'll stay in materials view and I'm just gonna erase this uh, all. Ah, damn it, erase soft, I want erase stroke. There we go, bang, 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 bang. Excellent. Um, and so I do like vertex coloring and it's why I had a solid fill material created. It also works with strokes. So let's say we wanted many colored strokes, okay? We wanna work with some grays, all right? Maybe a lighter gray, all right? A lighter still. Right, we can use this black stroke, all right, and we can even call this black something like you know, solid stroke or something like that. And then we can choose whatever color we draw in, and suddenly we've got it opened up, uh, like the palette opens up to us, and we can draw, you know, as you would in any sort of two D drawing application. I'm just gonna erase all of these, right? So, yeah, look, that's just a little bit about that. I'm just gonna stick to material for a second and let's go back to pencil. Let's go back to our non-photo red, which is this sort of line here. Now, what's, what's non-photo red? What is non-repo blue? 
Well, these are two colors from uh, analog, right? What you generally do is you would draw your roughs in non-repo blue, right? Here's head, right? What's our, and that's our character rough, right? Then we'd go to character clean, we'd jump into an ink pen. And our ink pen, we'd use black, right? And we would do our sort of like our more perfect lines, right? So our perfect lines come in. We do our little outlines and our inking. And maybe we do something like this, right? It's looking a bit like clippy there. Okay. And then you would take this image that you inked and you'd photocopy it. And the beauty of photocopying is that you can up the contrast and what would happen in the copy is that the blue, come on character rough, don't make me a, a liar here. The blue, character rough, what you doing here, buddy? <sighs> the opacity of layer to the, interesting. Right, I'm going to have to do it this way. The blue <laughs> would disappear and your facsimile or your photocopy would just show up the inks. And that's why it's called non-photo blue or non-repro blue because it would not reproduce. And non-photo red has the same sort of thing. Uh, if you did a scan, you can drop the reds or the blues in your scan um, and just keep the blacks. And it would it would be basically one, it was an old way of going you know, into digital inks um, very quickly. So uh, yeah, look, we're 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 storyboarding here, aren't we? So oh yeah, okay, done that, done that, excellent. Got non photo red, non repo blue. Now I happen to have a script, and what I want to do is I want to draw some of those objects in the script, and then jump to another panel and draw there. And this is where the storyboarding add-on comes in really, really handy. Okay, so I'll just I'll just do a quick demo here. Let's say that we were going to draw non-photo repro blue. Uh, yeah, I think that's just how opacity works in grease pencil now. Not great in front of a mesh object. Ah, so it was the mesh objects. Gotcha, gotcha, yes, right. So I've got a, oh, damn it. Alrighty, yeah, maybe that's it. Okay, look, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna work with it, right? Uh, we don't need to have that background right away. Let's see, is there our stroke placement, stroke thickness, world space, stroke depth, 2D layers? Okay, I could probably have a word to Ed if it, Word watches this. Uh, blah, word. If Ed watches this later, hi Ed. <laughs> All right, so this is something that could be looked at. Uh, maybe have the grease pencil appear just a fraction above the meshes or something like that. I'm not sure how, how good it uh, does that. All right, so we're on shot one, right? Let's, let's not worry about that for now. Let's jump into shot one. Here we are. And uh, we want to go straight into drawing. So I'm going to hit draw. Okay, shot one is still there. And we can immediately begin to draw. So let's say we were drawing this dude sort of um, it's a, it's a street. Okay. Let's go into material view here. And oh, that's, that's really light, isn't it? You know what I'm going to do? <laughs> I'm going to draw in black. Draw, and I'm going to use the pencil, and I am going to use this, and I'm just going to draw with a light gray texture. Storyboard up. Okay, cool. Just so that we can see what we're doing, all right? When I'm just uh, working on my own. Okay, and let's say we've got this guy just sort of, or this person. Why do we have to be limited to to one gender, right? Am I right? So and this person happens to like hats, right? They're walking along, 
right? Maybe there's a little you know, city in the background. We've got some shops and stuff. Okay, you know what? Because this is in the character rough, I can lock those off. Going to background rough. Aha! Aha, see what I'm doing here? And let's draw, you know, a couple of shops. We've got this nice little shop here. Right, just going to make it real quick. Signage. Another shop. Okay. Door here. Glass panel. Open. Bump. And uh, this has got an oval sign. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Right? And so these shops, he's walking down a street. Okay? So maybe there's some awning here or something. Right? What's this really cool? Oh, hey, Kelly. How's it going? <laughs> uh, this background is independent of the character. What I'm going to do is I'm probably going to move that line over to the background as well. So let's go into edit mode. Select this. M for move. To the background rough you go. Go back into draw mode here. Hello from England. Hi, Ashley. Um, good to have you here. So now we've got this background and we've got a character rough. Okay, let's say that uh, that's our frame one. And... Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, there's our frame one. And we all of a sudden want to work on frame two. As soon as we hit shot two, everything disappears. But what we can do is we go draw. Now we've got a shot two with all the same layers, all the same materials, okay? Now... This is the bit, okay, oh boy, I bumped, I bumped my uh, my thing here. I really hope, let me know if um, anything's crackly, I'll just have to adjust my mic. Okay, we're on shot two here. Now, I only tried this out a second ago, so I'm just gonna quickly save this. Ooh, <laughs> you kinda got a sneak peek at what I'm working on. Um, I'm gonna save this. Promotional, yeah, let's go here. Assets, 3D objects. Let's make a new folder. 2106. Oh, Bump. 2106. Oh, live stream. Okay, cool. Save. Right, just in case. Now, automatic placement. This is where I really hope I know what I'm doing. Otherwise, I'm going to have to do uh, this the long way. Copy move objects. Yes. Shot one. Let's move it to shot two. Copy. <gasps> it did it. Okay, we can probably get rid of you. Delete. Ah, oh, no. Sorry. It was That was the duplicate. We can get rid of you. Delete. Shot two, right? Shot one, if we're looking at shot one, shot two, shot three. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh boy, I did it. I actually did it. Awesome. Now we've got shot two, grease pencil, and we can continue. So now we can do things like, okay, why don't we move those shops along? All right, let's uh, grab, in edit mode, all of those shops. And maybe we move them, move them in the X. Maybe we want to zoom in a little bit. Okay, so maybe, uh, maybe it's a close-up. All right, there. Let's get our character. Scale them up. Okay, uh, what's a better, you know, usually something like this. Let's just delete that, all right. All right, uh, draw. We want something a little bit more detail, yeah? So uh, I, I know where that character is now. <laughs> Why did I even bother? Okay, so then we've got... Uh, Walking along, 
doing their thing. Okay, here's the close up, right, of the character. Okay, it is huge. <laughs> it is right. And that's now. This is when I usually want to drop the opacity there. Grr. This is going to be a, annoying. Maybe if I do that to the panels. Okay, so I can disable the panels. Now we can see the opacity. Right. It's a little bit better. Maybe we make our world settings just a tad darker. Just so everyone can, you know, it's not too eye bleedy. All right. Uh, and so on. So then we've got our close up. So let's go to shot three. On shot three, let's go to shot two grease pencil. Shot three. Okay, this is where we're starting to get some errors. <laughs> so maybe we've got, uh, it's only called that. There we go, yes. Right, so unfortunately it's a naming thing. I am an excited kid, Bron. You have no idea. <laughs> try using the opacity modifier. Should we try it? Yeah, let's try it, let's try it, okay. Uh, I'm gonna bring the storyboard back. I'm in object mode, shot pencil. Let's throw the modifier on here. Opacity. It just seems to be like, uh, you see, that's... <sighs> okay, here's, here's why I don't want to use the opacity modifier so far. So, because it... Uh, bleh. Uniform opacity. Okay, it, it sort, of, sort of works. But it's, it's just a... It's a hat on a hat, as they say. You know what that expression means? It means that, uh, oh look, no, 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 it's, uh, for some reason it's now working for us. I've got my storyboard panels back, but the opacity is now working. Interesting. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm also going to adjust the tint factor of this foreground. There we go. Uh, right. Shot three. We're editing this. Now... Let's say he was going to turn around real quick, okay? Uh, we could draw, uh, sure we can. Um, ah, right, uh, the opacity doesn't work in draw mode. Okay, that's, that's how it is. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to B, box select, all of those, L to link, uh, scale that in the X direction, right? So he does a bit of a swivel here. Right now, let's just massage some of these points. I'm going to go into uh, what's this called? What's this mode called? It's called proportional editing. Right, uh, and then I'm going to do a proportional uh, grab that proportional fall off, which means I can edit that line a little bit, so it looks a bit more realistic. It doesn't look like he's just gone exorcist. And uh, just sort of done a swivel, right? But we can just edit those lines a little bit better. Maybe want to do that. Okay, bring back those backgrounds. Now, we can at any point review our storyboards. Now, I really think this background color is a little dark. So why don't we object mode, select that. Let's use the background color. Let's brighten that up a little bit. Yeah, now it's just going to be blur. It's going to uh, maybe give it a bit of a color. Jeez. Uh, Should have been working in a better coloring. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Uh, we can review these at any point. We can go shot one. Okay, there's shot one. Shot two. Shot three. Right? Fatality. <laughs> What's more? If anyone has noticed down here, we've got a dope sheet. Which will play an animatic, right? And so every 24 frames, we're going to see a shot change, right? What's more, we want to render out these shots, right? Now, usually when you render, you go output properties, You've got your resolution set, great. You've got your frame start, your frame end, frame rate, 24 frames a second, which is the default. 
you can do this, uh, not the time remapping, the step, right? Now, if you do this, if you just go render straight out, what this means is that it's going to start at frame one, it's going to end by default at frame 250. It's roughly 10 seconds. Let's make our math match. At 240, that's 10 seconds. All right, we got uh, 12 frames. So 24 frames a second. Two more sets of 24 is 264, 288. So 288. Should have left it at that. All right, that should incorporate all of our shots because they're 24 frames apart. But if you just did this at step one frame per frame, this means you're going to get 24 copies of this frame, then 24 copies of this frame, right? Now, why did I leave this spacing? Why didn't I just do a spacing of one? Then you could have frame, 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 frame. Okay, that's great. Because maybe I want to then work with an animatic. Maybe I want to move these shots around later on, you know, the markers and such, right? And to space them out means that the animatic can actually be rendered out as a video if need be, right? And plays, boom, 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 right? That's great. But if you just wanted to render out the frames, using your scene render settings, all you've got to do is step by 24. Okay. Because what that means is it's going to render one frame per 24. Okay. So then it'll render one, it'll render the 24th frame or the 25th, then the next one, the next one, and each is spaced out by 24. Or you can let the add on. Do the work. Let's let's scroll down here in the add-on. Okay, we've got output, export marker list, viewport, render markers, render, render marker images. And they're just the frames on each of these markers labeled with a camera. Right? How cool is that? So when you hit that, let's see what happens. We can, uh, we can give it a location and then hit OK and, and it will just render out those frames. So you don't even have to look at your scene. You don't have to do the funky math and, and all that sort of stuff. That is really something else. So gonna go back to my storyboarding sets, okay? Um, Markom, are you still watching? <laughs> Markom supplied me with a script for this. And I was going to get to it. Where are we at? We're at 9.14. We're almost at an hour in. And we've got about 30 watches here. How does a point light affect the scene and look of the storyboard? Can you use light to help colors and do values? Sean, I'm going to answer this question immediately. I don't usually do this, but I'm going to do it uh, just for you. Uh, just to show you. Uh, yes. The answer is yes. You can use a point light uh, to affect the look of the storyboard. How do we do this? Uh, all right, so I haven't done this yet, Sean, so uh, apologies if I have messed this up, but I, I know that grease pencil objects can be uh, affected by light. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go character roughy, we're gonna lock that off. Let's say we were going to do a clean character drawing. Okay, I wanna bleh, storyboard panels, let's delete that, okay. Let's get rid of our... Um, Thing here and let's let's draw ourselves a clean character. Um, hey skills <laughs> from another one of the servers. Skills is on the uh, Spitfire Storyboards server. One that's uh, what's well, very cool. Uh, I'm going to draw with some inks. Going to use my blacks and for the moment I'm going to go over to my tool set and let's draw an outline in sort of a nice dark grain. Let's let's say that this was. What have I got here? What am, I, what am I not able to draw? Ah, the character clean opacity is really far down. Okay, there we go. Character roughs have to be dropped. Okay, cool. So let's let's draw something a little bit cleaner. Let's go, okay, let's say that he's wearing a nice baseball cap. Okay. Uh, we can do better than that. Why don't we enable our stabilize stroke? I love this tool. What a coincidence. I'm just using this for the second time right now. Hi, Charles. Uh, glad you could join us. Okay, so there's, see, see that smooth tool? Oh, how cool is that, right? Okay, let's go up with the nose. 
Let's give him a bit of a yeah. Yeah, I think he's <laughs> I think he's a he after all that. Yeah, it could still be anyone's guess. Okay, so there we go. Got this person here. Yeah. It should come around like that. Okay, so it's a bit of a swivel neck t-shirt. The arm would now be kind of like... Okay, this is not going to be perfect, guys. What am I doing this for? Because I want to demonstrate something. So, oh, now he really looks like he's got a... His head's on back to front. <laughs> Let's try this again. Let's make it so we got that. If he's a bit more front on, it shouldn't look so weird. But we'll sort of give him a bit of a lean like this. Or good day, should I say. I'm in Australia too. Excellent. Charles is in a good time zone. A lot of you guys are actually in good time zones. So I like doing it this time. Okay, so we've got... All right. So there we go. We've got this. Uh, what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to add another uh, temporary layer, grease pencil layer. I'm not even going to label it. And I'm going to work with my solid fills here. And look, let's just work in oh, gray tones. Work in gray tones for now. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to put in a gray tone here. Right. It's going to outline it. This is, the, this is my quick and dirty way of doing it. Uh, otherwise, I'd be showing you how to do fills and stuff like that, which are really cool to do. And then we need a, a darker tone for the hat. Okay. So doing some fills here. Let's do whites of the eyes. Let's do a lighter iris. No, that's too light. And let's do black for the pupil. What the hell? Let's do a little highlight in here too. So we go... Oh, yeah, okay. So I see how that's working. And maybe his t-shirt... Why have I chosen a colored t-shirt? Because the gray won't look great. Okay, so here's our guy. Um, I'm going to try to bring our cursor to the selected. And can we see our cursor? 3D cursor. There it is. So we know it's there. Okay. I'm going to go to object mode. Now in rendered view, we got scene lights. Yes, scene world. Yes. I'm going to add a point light, as Charles wanted to... No, Sean. Sean, yes, cool. Shift A, light, point light. Let's give this a nice bit of power here. And we'll bring this up in the Y direction, which is in front of... Do you see what's happening? I think we might have to drop the power there a little bit. But what we can do is... By increasing the power a little bit there, moving it away, we can actually affect it. Let's give this a bit of a tint, right? Now we can do some very subtle, almost airbrushy type stuff. Okay. <laughs> yes, right? And so uh, you can do this with, with multiple lights if you wanted to. So let's say we wanted to tint this a bit bright here. Let's duplicate that and bring that down here and let's give this more of a purpley tone. Okay. Uh, specular radius. Sometimes the radius gives it. It's not perfect, um, but if we give a bit of a low value to this light, it should... Let's see here. Now, I'm going to cheat here. I'm going to show you how uh, it's looking, right? So, oh, I've got a bit of a discombobulation here. Right, in the 3D view, storyboard panels are in, okay? Oh, oh, Ed, forget what I said earlier. The, um, yes, the, the, the grease pencil does sit above the board. How about that, right? Look at this. The proximity of the light moving in the Y direction will brighten that up. Okay? 
I'm going to use this light here as well. Uh, uh, move it over a little bit. Okay, I don't think this is going to be affecting it that much, but this one definitely is, right? So we can bring that down. When we're looking through our camera, now we've got something a little bit subtler. It looks really nice. Okay, and in the storyboard, it kind of works, right? So we've got shot one, shot two, shot three, we've sort of done this finished. Okay, and that's pretty much how it'll render. Like if I hit F12, okay, okay, that's my shot one. Come on, I want to, okay, shot three. Will I sh render shot three? No. All right, I haven't mastered this. Let's see now. Viewport render markers, render marker images. I just want to render shot three. Right. Viewport render holding on timeline marker positions. Not supported. All right. Paul, can you edit how much it stick on the wall? Uh, well, yes, you can. Uh, do, do you mean like how, how far back does it go? Um, yeah, but like you'd have to basically, um, yes, you can. <laughs> That's the answer. It, it's sort of hard to do because like, it, it, and it's probably not worth doing because it'll sort of wreck it for everything else. Right. But you can sort of see how it's actually sitting above that. Now, the other thing is that you will notice going from shot to shot. Oh, now, this is the one thing I haven't figured out how to do. So forgive me uh, for this. Um, maybe playhead. Ah, yes, of course. Playhead. Duh. Okay, so let's go into shot three there, and now let's do a render. That's it, of course. Duh. Move the marker to shot three on the timeline to render shot three. Yes, playhead. I don't work in animation a lot. I work in illustration, and so, yeah, stupid stuff like that just goes through my brain like a sieve. Really sorry. <laughs> it's really obvious. Yes, so that's how it renders, okay? Really nice stuff. Um, but, of course, you know, if you went back to uh, shot... Two, right? And if we could move the playhead to the marker, right? We render that, right? Shot two renders like that. Okay. Now, what what happens with some instances is because these shots appear just at, at the shots there. Um, I was wondering how they show two D animation in three D. I'll get to that in a second. All right, uh, shot one, shot two. What happens if the shot one grease pencil, let's say we've got that, were to overlap slightly with the shot two grease pencil? When we went to shot two, would we see it? Yes, yes we would. Right, so yeah, you sort of have to keep that contained, right? Um, as much as you can, but there's a little bit of gap there. And so that's sort of the storyboarding um, add-on. Now, another thing, I know what you're thinking, what, what happens when I finish up with 12 frames? What happens when I wanna add a frame? Let's see, I get to shot 12, right? And I need another frame. Can I add one? Well, the answer is yes. Uh, the way it works is we just go to add a shot. I'm just going to save this because this has crashed on me when I've done an undo. So I just go automatic placement. It will add a shot after shot 12 corresponding to this pattern, which is four across and then it goes down. So it's going to add another column. Add a shot. Oh, hello. What have we got and done? We got shot 13. There it is. All right? Let's add another shot. Hopefully it won't crash. 14. And add another shot, 15 and 16. Now, if we go back to the storyboard, right, the storyboard camera is also 16.9, so it's not going to capture those shots. All right? So if you wanted to do boards, again, uh, rendering out just a storyboard frame uh, is something that I, I want to learn how to do. I'm, I'm sure there's a, a function in here that does it um, or whatever. But look, now you've got these four extra shots and so you can jump to shot 13. 
right? And it's created these new panels as well. Of course, it hasn't given it the material. So if you wanted to give those the material, you would have to select them, select one of these, shift select, sorry, control L, materials, right? And now we've got four extra boards. Hey Charles, I came in late. Have you tried adding keyframe panels within the shot? Uh, so, oh, so, so like between shots one and two, let's say. I have, but I'm not sure if it likes the settings thing. Like, I don't know if I can sort of grab and move it. It tends to add the shot at the end. Now, what you could... Let's try it, shall we? I'm on shot one. This is probably going to make it crash. <laughs> Run shot one. Let, let's take a look at shot one. Let's say we wanted to have a shot between shot one and two. Is that what we're talking about, Charles? I think that's what we're talking about. We've got shot one selected. Let's say we've moved the playhead somewhere between shot one and two to 13. All right. We want to add a shot, but we don't want it in fast draw mode. Maybe that's it. Add board cam and marker add a plane with a camera at the 3d cursor and a marker to the timeline well maybe fast draw mode won't affect this let's go add board bang all right what this has done is it's added the board at the end but this is the board shot 17 uh in the shot add more panels not shots The shots, add more panels, not shots. Aha, look at that. Okay, before I get to this comment, Charles, look what happened. Shot 17 now slotted in between shot and shot one and shot two. So we could call this, we can even give this a name, I think. Can we call this something? Can we relabel it? Can we rename? Do I right click? I want to relabel shot 17. Can I do that? Panel elements. Active object. Pick camera by element. Active camera, 3D cursor to panel. Okay, these are things I haven't played with yet. Right, I want shot 17 to be relabeled. Right, how do I do this? Do I have to do it here? Do I have to go... Shot 17, double click, say shot 1A. Yes, okay. Set the chosen camera, all right. I wonder if there is a relabel function. There probably is, I haven't figured it out. So you can get as many panels as you need, even to the point. Oh, I see, so you, you, you wanna move the markers. So let's say that shot one, you wanted it longer. Right, I see what you mean. Okay, let, let, let's zoom in here. Let's see if we can move this mark. Yes, all you have to do is move that marker along. Move this marker along, right? And so now, but you, you know, you're gonna get overlap. So maybe we can shift select a bunch. Yep, and grab them and move them. Yeah, I think so. Uh, but it would have to be on the grease pencil because these are basically keyframes. Also industry. Does that answer your question, Charles? So let's say that we wanted shot one to go a little longer than 24 frames. Yeah, that, 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 that's what you're saying? See you, Bron. Yeah, I might have to. Might have to go too. I've been here for an hour. Really wanted to just do this hour-long uh, live stream. So uh, yeah, look, you know what I might do? I might just sort of uh, see if there's any questions uh, about this. Markom, I'm really. If you're still here, I'm really sorry. I didn't get around to playing around with your script. I might do that with um, possibly another demonstration uh, when I get better at this, or if I'm allowed to, uh, so now we've got shot one, shot 1A, right, yeah, hey, hey, no, it's not a question, oh, okay, uh, that's, too, that's cool, okay, right, so even though it places the boards in this linear fashion, maybe F2 works as a shortcut to rename, oh, let's try this, 
F2. <gasps> it does. It does. Genius. Shot two. So it has to be... Yes, it does. There we go. Okay, I've never used that shortcut before. Thank you very much. You can put extra keyframes. I think he wants to have more planes per camera, ergo per shot. Can you do camera rotations with this? Ah, uh, you probably can, but I don't know if it's... I mean, like, these are isometric cameras that are generated. So probably once you've finished your board, maybe you could probably, you know, do zooms in and zooms out. So let's say we went to shot three, right? And then maybe we could do this. Grab and hit the Y key. Ah, okay, because it's isometric, it's not going to do that. You would definitely need to make it perspective, which will wreck the whole illusion. Okay, but in perspective, you could zoom in. The other thing you could do, if we went to shot three, let's say, orthographic, change the orthographic scale. Okay. Shot three. So you keyframe your orthographic scale. So let's let's say, let's let's get rid of shot one. Can we can we delete? Oh uh, yeah, no, I always have problems deleting these frames. So I'm going to grab this and move this back. Let's say that shot three, we were going to zoom up from frame thirty to frame seventy. Okay, let's do this. Orthographic scale on frame thirty. We hit a keyframe, and then frame 70, we incre or decrease the scale, so we do a slight zoom in. We get a keyframe in. Now, when we play it, dun da da da, we got a zoom. Dun da 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 da. So it's shot, shot two, and then shot three is got a scale in. How cool is that? So, yes, uh, for animatics, like animatic is on top of. Um, Storyboarding. So obviously the the idea behind storyboarding is that you, you, you draw all your storyboards first and then you think about the timing and animatic. Okay. And yes, I think once you've done all your shots and they've been approved by, I don't know, a producer or whatever, then you could go in and finesse the keyframes. Now I'm just going to see if this grease pencil dope sheet, yes, there it is. There it is. There's the dope sheet. Okay, we've got these. So we can obviously move these around, but these markers are what's interesting. Now, uh, because these markers are set out, so you sort of have to think ahead, right? Let's say we have to do each shot is five seconds. You then have to space these markers out five seconds apart, and then you'll have to manually move them so that the camera will switch from shot to shot to shot because it's this add-on switches your camera across a render, right? And then you would not be doing uh, the, uh, what's it called? Uh, the render marker images render. You'd be going to your render settings and doing a frame start to end render. See what I mean? Yeah. All right. Look, I'm going to leave this here, but like if there's any questions, I'll sort of take them from uh, the, the chat. Uh, real quick, I can probably hang around for another 10-15 minutes uh, before I have to go, but uh, yeah. Ruzaki asked, how to draw good? You're going to hate the answer, Ruzaki. Uh, it's practice. <laughs> you sit down and every day you draw and you draw again. And eventually, boy, I really wanted to say you just get good at it. No. <laughs> um, you experiment. Uh, look, one, one method that I like to use is draw every day. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, uh, what this means is that uh, I'm just going to do something while I'm talking so that there's something visual here. Um, yeah. What this means. There we go. That's what I want to do. Uh, drawing every day. <laughs> Hope you have a blessed day, dude. Yeah, you two skills. See you later. Um, it just means that you, you get into practice. It's like building muscles. If anyone, I don't know, works out or, or exercises or does anything 
over and over and over again. You just get good at it. You can do exercises that are very specific to hone skills. Use references, use whatever, right, if you've got a specific task. But if you do the same thing every day, you build up muscle memory, right? You get used to, you sort of know your own style. You, you realize that, oh, okay, last time I drew the line like this, it, you know, did not feel good. It, uh, you know, it sort of felt, what am I, what am I doing here? Oh, yes, I'm going to move him along so he's down the street. There we go. So we got shot one, then one A. So we got shot one, shot one A, right? Shot one, shot one A. What was I saying? I was I was making a point here. Yes. So e even though they're out of whack, right, you'll be able to go shot one, shot one A will render next, then shot two, right? So you can do these little additional shots, but um, they won't sort of move all the cameras down the line because like if we're taking a look out, you can see how shot 1A is down here because it's an extra shot, right? Uh, I can see why this would be good for animatics. Comics, not so much. Yeah, no. Um, I wanted to ask Ed about this. Um, where I could see this working for comics and uh, it's one of those situations where I'm like, why would you? Um, is if you could change the size and aspect ratio of each of these cameras uh, so that, you know, this one could have uh, a 16 by 9 and then this one could be a different, you know, aspect ratio and, and pixel size. You could probably lay out a page in a similar type of add-on, which means that you would then have to draw in grease pencil. But again, I wouldn't exactly want to do that um although although that there, there is a, a method in grease pencil where you could sort of like do a mask layer and have everything behind each of those grease pencil objects it, it could work if you're solely working grease pencil but i tend to work in 3d and grease pencil when creating my comics right I can draw, but not without reference. Can't draw for imagination. That is totally fine. I use a lot of reference too. Sometimes I photograph myself. Um, if anyone doesn't mind me jumping into another program quickly, I'm just going to bring up Uh, that is kind of a problem though, if there will be easier way to render storyboard camera, you're going to want to have your shots organized. Right? You only want them organized as far as looking at one final frame. Okay. So this is where it looks a little counterintuitive before I get onto Clip Studio Pro, right? Yes. If you're looking at the, how the sausage is made, yes, shot one, shot one A, shot two. Doesn't make a lot of sense. And then, you know, you want to put a shot between this one and that one, and that gets slotted in here. But because the markers along the timeline, right, see these markers down here, are in order, that's how they will render out. Even if you've got uh, an animatic, it'll go shot one, shot one A, two, three, and so on, right? And so the final render isn't going to take this flow into account. This is just how they're laid out for the purposes of this panel layout, okay? Um, you know, obviously, if you wanna do, say, like a storyboard camera, right, that's gonna be slightly problematic, but usually what you wanna do is you wanna render each of these frames out, maybe print them out, or maybe just play them in a certain order. The producer's gonna be looking at frame one, frame one A, frame two, frame three, and so on, right? They're not gonna be looking at this whole board exactly. Um, and then you can always, you know, use a 2D program, I guess, if it needs to be delivered this way. Um, or, you know, you'll just have to relabel things and copy and paste stuff. But this sort of copy move objects is really interesting because like, take a look at this. So let's say that we wanted to move three to four. Okay, why don't we do this? Grease pencil, shot three, move it to shot four. Not copy it, but move it. Hey, why don't you move it? Move. I want to move. Is it because it's in object mode? 
shot three grease pencil do I need to be in draw mode wow okay that's grayed out for some reason all right I'll have to copy that and then delete it okay so that's hello swap shots how do you swap okay there's a lot of functions here which I haven't done this yet Draw shapes in perspective. Yes, you can draw them in perspective. Uh, mm, 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 mm. Uh, let's see now. Phew. Let's go to shot four here. I'm going to copy this over. So we've got this in shot four. Remember, he's not lit there. Drawing in perspective. Alrighty. Shot four. We're in shot four. Draw. Okay. Shot for grease pencil. Uh huh. What we want to do? Let's take our cleans here. Uh, either Becca would be like triangles. Uh, but yeah. Okay. Look, perspective means that the camera's got to be perspective, right? Uh, because if we say select everything and try to rotate this in the Z direction, you're just going to get this very flat rotation. Okay. Oh, hang on. We need this grease pencil layer as well. Right, we're going to get this very flat rotation. It's going to kind of look like Prismo from uh, Adventure Time. Uh, <laughs> if anyone gets that reference. Uh, backgrounds, clean, character rough. Right, so the perspective can work, but for these isometric views, not great. But what you can do is move things above and below, right? A storyboard is a simulation of 3D space, and so obviously what you want to do is let's jump on the background rough slit, let's say, right? We've got these doors over here, um, but let's say, let's select everything there and delete those points, go back into draw mode. Let's say that he was in some sort of open field, right? We would have to, let's get ink, ink pen, black, um, tool, gray, right? Let's say we uh, use our rule of thirds here. Let's say we've got this, okay, and then we've got some nice trees in the background, right? Like that. Maybe some shrubbery, mountains, what have you, right? And the perspective sort of like maybe has a road along here, and then, uh, or maybe he's on the road. Okay, there we go. And we've got some fence palings. Here's my crappy one point perspective here. <laughs> right, there's a little bit of a fence here. Right. Yeah, look at my crap one point perspective. This is terrible. Right. Okay, so we want to draw perspective. We don't necessarily need to model it unless you're doing some sort of a, like what Spitfire Storyboards does. Like, what Paul does there is just amazing. He just, you know, builds all his stuff and then he will snap that 2D image to there. But then he's got an animated camera, right? That's a different workflow. This allows you to work within the storyboard function as is more traditional so that you can nut out an idea with the producer, right? Oh, yes. Nice. Uh, okay, let's get the 3D cursor out of there. There we go. <laughs> Right? Uh, so let, let's see, uh, have I missed a bit of uh, conversation here? I mainly suggest using roughs for now. Yes, good to know that. That storyboard page view should have notes and dialogue boxes under them and render an image or PDF, if not using the render as an animatic approach. I wonder if Ed's is working on that. I really hope so, Charles, because yes, I was thinking of that. Now, you can sort of do this. Let's go to a blank shot here, right? Here's number five. Shot five, let's go to draw. We'll get a grease pencil shot in there. You can also add text and the text will come up, All right? Let's edit this text. Description, let's scale that text down, All right? And we can do something like, okay, we definitely need a material. Oh, man, I hate using the principal shader for everything, especially when it's 2D, right? So let's say we've got that, okay? Um, <laughs> and the trees were looking a bit like curses, 
right? You could probably put some text boxes down there, right? And then if you wanted to, let's say we got the grease pencil here and draw, and we're gonna draw ourselves a box in ink pen, black, right? And then we can just do, uh, oh, that's really disgusting and thick. Let's lower that radius to something a little bit manageable. All right, something like that, okay. And now we've got a description box. We'll get out of that. And, uh, oh. Uh, oh, we want to align that, so it's obviously the text function. Don't want it centered, we want it left. Uh, let's move that left. Let's scale that down a little bit, All right? Let's stick that with it. Uh, it was a lovely day. And no, 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 was taking a walk or whatever the, the, the description is. Yeah. Uh, and so that if we were to take now a look at the storyboard panel layout, right? Panel five would have some text, but yes, I understand. Like you want that little text box underneath. You probably could build it in somehow uh the darren's eyeball finally on at the same time instead of emailing all the time hey darren yes <laughs> how's it going i've still got 40 watches so i'm just sort of asking questions like then what you could do is you could take that stuff move it in the z direction underneath but yeah you sort of have to build that in so yeah i, I don't know um maybe that is something that ed's working on uh ed if you watch this even if it's late uh or you know it's a it's a, at a different time uh, yeah, look, as we're working here and discussing it, maybe these are things that uh, you're considering putting in. I don't know if, how hard it is. It's certainly a nice to have because what I've demonstrated here is just amazing stuff because it's just so easy to build the storyboard function. And it's just, you know, it's it's got functionality that is very, very useful, especially inside of a Blender workflow. Uh, and what add-ons like this do uh, are really sort of help you along with all of that. And uh, yeah, Darren, I was about to bug out, you know, about 10 minutes of just answering some questions here. Um, yeah. Okay, here's a question for you guys. Uh, do you guys want to see more of this? Do you guys want me to say, work on Markom script? next live stream or do you want some other stuff like geo geo nodes or something like that oh is mark i'm about to live stream oh i better get off so you can all jump over to his live stream mark i'm uh if you can't drop the link i will drop the link in i think i've allowed it asking for any short film animation like you did for property deal animation all ah, right My luck. Uh, <laughs> also, it would be nice to have a function to add name of shots on actual shots easily. Ah, yes, so this one will be labeled. Yeah, look, I think the way this storyboard uh, add-on works is that it's making the storyboard ready for animation so it doesn't have all the screen directions. There are some things you can do, though. Like, let's say we go to an empty shot here. Here's shot six. You can add a focus object, add a focal point for the camera. So how do we do that? Well, I'll definitely need my 3D cursor. I'm going to select this. I'm going to... Cursors are selected. And... Uh, let's, let's add an empty. But we'll add an empty that looks like... A sphere. Okay, I'll just zoom that down there, okay? So what's the name of this object? Name. It's called empty. Duh. Right. So we're on shot six, and we want to add a focus object. So, oh, hello. Interesting. So I can add a focal 
point object. Oh, oh, it does it. So I don't need to add the camera. Right, so I select shot six. Then I go add focus object. And if I grab that focus object, right. Oh, there's the object. So now I can shrink that down. I can move that around. I can say move that that way. Right, so, okay, I see this. I think I'm moving a lot of this, uh, missing a lot of this stuff. Right, so, okay, so let's say there's a focus object there, right? Let's shrink this down. All right, now, the, the best way I can describe this, see, if we've got this focus object and we're on shot six, right? And as we wanted to do with shot three, we want to, uh, no, it's not gonna do it. Shot six. Uh, okay. I had this idea that uh, <laughs> if I did any sort of scaling on the camera, it would hone in on that. <laughs> I guess it's more for reference. Maybe it does, I don't know. Uh, yeah. There's, okay, so focal point. Right. All right. Uh, active object pick camera by element. All right. I don't know how this works. I thought I did, but I don't. I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> uh, can I call you this guy? Uh, you approach storyboarding. Yeah, man. Uh, look, I'll, I'll do that once I'm off the stream, Marco, and we can maybe discuss your script because that would be really cool to work with. Uh, okay, guys, I am. I think I'm going to sign off here. Uh, so, yeah, look, let's just go back out to the storyboard panel so we can sort of see what mess we've made here. Uh, we've covered a lot of stuff. We've covered adding shots and we've added, uh, you know, adding the storyboard and doing some copy move stuff, the move grease pencil object to shot. Uh, I need to figure out how to do that, what grays it out, what doesn't. Um, if you open up a text editor window, you'll see that you do get the ability to add action, dialogue, and notes per shot. It just doesn't seem to facilitate printing yet. Ah, should we take a quick look? Let's open up text, text editor. What did, did you mean? So if I say select, do I have a tip? Oh, shot one, shot two. Oh, so you could put the descriptions in there. Right, I see. So this is basically for working inside of Blender. It's not really meant. So like if I go to shot two, the text for shot two should show up. If I then go to shot three, I have jumped. Yes, there, there is shot three, There's shot four, shot five. And, and so I can type. Nice. This just gets better and better. Yeah. Okay. Look, that that's that's still handy, Charles. I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna argue with Ed. Um, but like, yeah, like if, if that, yeah, I, I think what we want to do is um, on stream, say so share your knowledge with the people. Oh, oh, so Paul, can you call in? To, uh, I was thinking on stream, so you can share the knowledge with the people. Ask what that means later. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> um, right. Yeah, so so then you can sort of add description. Uh, description of shot. Something happens and we focus in on this rectangle. Right. Uh, okay, so it uh, looks a bit like code, but uh, maybe, code, but, uh, maybe we can... Indent, uh, it's not going to do it. Format, wrap, wrap text, word wrap. There we go. Cool. Right. And so then that would be shot six and it doesn't disappear. There it is on shot six. Nice. Darren waves. I will catch you uh, one day at the beginning. I'll tr maybe make this a little bit later. Okay. Uh, so Charles, you, yeah, thanks for the tips, man. Um, this is really, really good stuff. Uh, so look, I hope this sort of demystified this plugin. Now I should, yes, I have a link to it in the show notes description. So you could just go down to the bottom there 
and take a look. Uh, that should cover everything. Um, yeah, so you, you want to take a look at the storyboard. Yeah, it's a free plug-in or add-on. But I highly recommend you kick Ed a couple of bucks because I, as far as add-ons go, this one is really useful. Or at least I found it useful. And I kicked him a few bucks because I'm going to be using it for a professional job that's going to be paying me. So it's, you know... It's, I see it as a tax write-off, a work expense, all that sort of stuff. And like, you know, it's, it saved me so much time that you know, I felt it was definitely worth paying for. But, you know, it's sort of a pay as you, what you want type of thing. Um, but I'm just going to plug that for Ed. You know, of course, by all means, if you just want to try it out, yes, download it for free. I'm sure Ed will like the download. Um, but if you do find yourselves working on something professional or whatever, uh, always just go and maybe just hit the buy again button or something like that later on. Uh, it's all, you know, doesn't work for you, then, in, you know, you, you've wasted no money. <laughs> that's, the way, that's the way I work with Gumroad anyway. All right, guys. Well, look, I'm going to sign off. Uh, it's been fun. Thank you all for joining. I'll try to be on about this time next week again, uh, unless it coincides with Marco. Maybe I've got to go earlier. I don't know. He's, he's got an amazing live stream. Uh, so yeah, look, guys, uh, let's see. Now, what do I have to do to stop this? Do I just go stop streaming? Uh, 